All right, welcome to the Chaz Palminteri Show. That's right, it is Monday. Monday at 11 o'clock, you know what that means, we have a new show here. And today we're going to talk about, I'm by myself today, so today we're going to talk about anxiety. Anybody got anxiety out there? Huh? Is that a joke or what? In this day and age, what's going on in the world? World War III is around the corner. I hope not. Anxiety. I'm looking to be one of those preppers, you know, John. I'm looking to get one of those things upstate. What's Anybody that? got land upstate? I want to buy a lot of land. I want to build one of those, you know, uh, underground things because God knows what the hell's going to happen. But the good news is my show, I did Atlantic City last week, and I did the uh, Ovation Hall at Ocean Casino. 4,000 people were there, John, 4,000. Unbelievable. Okay, they were shoving them in. 4,000 people sold out. So let me tell you where the show is going to be. Don't forget, you want to see my show, go to chazpalmentary.net, and you can come and see my show. So that's the 23rd of this month. We're going to be April 23rd. We're going to be in Englewood, New Jersey at the Bergen Pack. Tickets are almost gone, but there's still some great seats left. The Bergen Pack, the 23rd. Um, June 4th, I'm going to be in the Richfield Playhouse. The Richfield Playhouse, I know I got a lot of friends coming June 4th. Anybody want to come and see the show? Uh, again, almost sold out. Got to get you things. And my favorite place, I love this place. June 11, Huntington, New York, the Paramount. The Paramount Theater in Huntington. You got to go to this place, folks. They got the bar downstairs. They got the, it's a speakeasy. It's um, it's unbelievable. It's, it's just such a great place to eat, have dinner, and see the show. Uh, what else we got? It June twenty third. We're gonna be in Detroit, Dover, Detroit, Rollins at the Rollins Theater in Dover, uh, Dover, Detroit. And uh, what is that? September? Yeah, nine sixteen. That's September, right? September. September sixteenth. Melville, New Jersey, at the Lavoie Theater, uh, September 22nd. And I'll be in Cincinnati, Ohio, at the Taft Theater. And October 14th, at the, what is that, Aaron? I don't have Oh, Akon. Akon. Akon, Ohio, at the. Akron. Akron. Yeah. That's Akron. My dyslexia, excuse me. Akron, Ohio, at the E.J. Thomas Hall. But if you want to see the show, go to chaspalmentary.net. You can get tickets. You can also get the card that I sell, my lucky card. The saddest thing in life is wasted talent. It's a great gift for your children. My father wrote this on a card. He gave it to me and my sisters, and we all ended up doing pretty well. But it's a great, great uh, gift for a birthday, Christmas. and uh, Or you can get my shirts. You can get the shirts. The saddest thing in life is wasted talent. Now you just can't leave. Uh, T-shirts that say, uh, I married one of the great ones. The women love it. Buy for your wife, guys. You'll get away with a lot of shit. You tell her she's one of the great ones, she'll love it. Okay, anxiety. Me, I think one of the uh, number one things of anxiety is triggers. You got to know what triggers your anxiety. People don't realize, you know, it's like the simplest thing could trigger uh, anxiety. I remember when I was young, I when I would go into... Um, uh, um, a funeral, it was like the smell of the flowers. And whenever I smell those flowers, even if I wasn't in a funeral parlor, it made me think of some people that passed away that I was a little boy and went to see them. And it, it was like the weirdest thing. Well, sense one of the biggest triggers for um, remembering things. I anxiety, really? Well, not even anxiety, just in general. Scent is one of those things where it hits the right spot of the brain where it brings back memories. It, oh, my God. It brings back. Oh, somebody. How many times have you been home or you listen to music and you hear a song? And as soon as you hear that song, you go right back there. Now, if it's a good memory, it's good. If it's a bad memory, it's, uh, it's not too good. Like a breakup song. Like a breakup song. You know what's funny about these, you know what's funny about, about, I remember when I was in, um, let's see, when I was, I don't know, I fell in love with a young lady, I, I, we were together a long time, a beautiful lady, we were together like 10 years from like 21, 22 to 32, on and off, the first five years was strong, the last five, you know, 
she broke up with me, I broke up with her. But I remember the first time she broke up with me, the first in the beginning, devastated, crying, <laughs> please don't say that. I mean, hysterical crying. And I think about that. I mean, I remember the anxiety that I had. I, I would go to bed at night. I would go to bed at night, try to go to bed. I would wake up. And I would look, and I thought I slept all night, and I looked at the clock, and it was 15 minutes. And I would wake up every 10, 15 minutes. It was horrible. And the anxiety that I have, I couldn't eat. I lost weight. And I'm sure people out there, young people, this is a normal thing if this happens to you. If somebody breaks up with you and you can't sleep, trust me, it'll pass. It'll pass. That is God, that is life, putting a callus on you. You got to have a callus. If you don't have calluses in life, you got smooth hands, and then as soon as you touch something, you get cut. It's the same thing with your brain and life. As soon as you get some hard times, you can't take it. But I'm sure, have you ever fell in love, John, and got your heart broken? Oh, yeah. I'm sure everybody has at one point or another. Yes, I'm sure. And if you haven't, oh, that's sad. You know, what William Shakespeare said, it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. You know, I mean, but so true. And what I, what I did was I learned something when that girl left me, when she left me. I learned that I could survive it. But we all go through it. Whether you're 21 or whether you're 45 and you got a divorce, whether you divorced her or she divorced you, you know, sometimes even divorcing, if you're the one who caused the breakup, you have anxiety too, especially if the other person still loves you because it's a hurt. You hurt, you, you feel this pain that you hurt this person so much. So either way, anxiety is part of life. It's part of life, and you got to know what triggers you. And sometimes people stay together married because they don't want to face that anxiety whether they're again older or younger but pain is a necessary thing of life i know that sounds crazy i always tell people that pain is necessary if you really want to live a full life you got to have pain show me a person who's never suffered and I'll show you a person who's never learned. Because the only way you learn is through suffering. And nobody, nobody learns when life is great. Nobody. Life is great. Hey, you know, how could you learn? You're, you're, you're making a lot of money. Uh, life is great. But when, but when life throws you a curveball, then you learn. When the shit hits the fan, then you learn. When you're there by yourself in that dark room and nobody else is around you, then you learn. And that's where you separate the men from the boys or, you know, the girls from the real women, as they say. Because some people hit the wall in life and they run away. And what, they, what do they do? They take drugs, they stay in a bad situation, they drink, uh, they make bad decisions. It's a way of not dealing with the pain. But the people who face the wall and then find a way to get over it, those are the people who really are successful. So, again, like I said, anxiety is normal. So if you have anxiety, it's a normal thing. What is anxiety, really? It's worrying about, it's thinking about the past and worrying about the future. If you really think about it, that's what anxiety is. The past is over. The future didn't come yet. So what are you thinking about? Think about what's happening now. You know, it's, it's that old cliche. It's, that's why it's called the present. It's a present. 
God has given you a present, and the present is now. It's too late to think about the past. It's too early to think about the future. Accept the present, and you'll live a much happier life. What are some of the other things we talked about, John? Well, some of the other things that we wrote down were practice your breathing techniques and exercise regularly. Look, exercise, exercise. How many times have we heard that? People who say, well, I don't have time to exercise. Really? You don't have time to exercise? Well, you have time to have anxiety, right? That you have time for. You have time for to be crippled laying in a bed all morning or all night. That's classic example of fighting through the pain. If you could fight through the pain of anxiety, really fight through it. I remember when I was really, you know, I had a tough time. Uh, things weren't working out. You know, I, you know, obviously I'm an actor and a writer. And uh, before things happened for me, when I was in L.A. in the early 80s and trying to make it as, as everybody does, I had some anxiety. And I said, you know what? I've always worked out. I always boxed. I always went to the gym. I went back to the gym. And I felt so much better. I defy anybody to go do a heavy workout, a good workout, and tell me you don't feel better when it's over. Tell me. Because you're feeling, you're feeling good. You're getting the serotonins in your brain, in your blood. You start feeling better because it's impossible to have a negative thought and a positive thought at the same time. Do you know that, John? I did not. It's impossible to have a negative thought and a positive thought at the same time. I can give you an example right now. All right, do not think of a gorilla. You thought of a gorilla, right? Can't, can't do it. I could tell you something, but automatically your mind goes to it. You know, uh, there's one guy, I forgot his name, he's on, he's on uh, he's a terrific speaker. I wish I, I would give him credit for this because he's the one where I read it. Oh, I forgot his name, but if I remember. He said that if you're skiing down a mountain, you're skiing down a mountain and there's a path with a lot of trees on each side. And if you tell the skier, don't hit the tree, don't hit the tree, don't hit the tree, he will hit the tree. Sooner or later, somebody will hit the tree. But if you tell the skier, stay on the pad, concentrate on the pad, stay on the pad, he'll make it down. Because he's not looking at the trees, he's looking at the path. And that's the way life is. You've got to look at the path. It's almost like a racehorse with those blinders, you know? You gotta look. That's why they put those blinders on these racehorses. They don't want to look at the guy on your left or right or what's going on around you. You want to stop anxiety, put the blinders on, work out, face it. Say to yourself, I'm working out, I'm doing this. You know what? For these two hours, this hour of the day, I'm not going to be depressed. After this, if I want to be depressed, I'll do it. That's how you fight anxiety, a little bit at a time. If you're having, if you're depressed, say, all right, but today, between 10 and 11, I'm going to work out, and I'm not going to be depressed. And then you do that. And then each day you do 10 and 11, you're not depressed. If, you, if you're depressed the rest of the day, fuck it. Be depressed, I say. Then each day you say, you know what? 10 and 11, I'm going to work out. From 12 to 1, I'm going to have lunch and not think about it. And then you do that. And then slowly but surely, after a while, you start getting into the habit of that. What is anxiety? Anxiety is a habit like anything else. The more you think about negative things, it becomes a habit, and you can't break that habit. But the more you think about positive things, that becomes a habit. So you have to be on the other side of the hill, as they say. Like, here's the hill, this is anxiety, and this is the good. 
And the higher up you get to the top to get on the other side, then after a while, maybe in the day, you only get anxiety at night. Well, that's better than getting it all day like you had it. Then maybe after a while, you only get anxiety at night two days a week or three days a week. And that's how you do it. It just doesn't go away. I don't want you to think that whoever says, oh, do this and your anxiety goes away. That's bullshit. Everything takes time. Everything. Okay? All right, it's time to pay the bills here. And I have a guy. I have 10 acres on my property. And I have Chris Galley at Hickory Homes and Properties. They've been in business since 1986. They are the best guys if you want anything done outside your house. Chris, right. so 1986, you've been in business, right? Yes, sir. And what exactly do you do? Well, we do residential and commercial tree service. We do larger jobs like site development, right. excavation work, land clearing. We have a lot of heavy equipment and things like that. So what I love about your company is you have these incredible machines that you could like, they're like spiders. They can come in a small space and open up and just right. take trees right down. We, we have all the specialized equipment to do what we have to do. Spider lifts, they go 92 feet in the backyard. Right. Whereas if you had a regular bucket truck, you could only go 62 feet in the front yard. Exactly. So we have the specialized equipment that we need. Right. And you've been in business since 1986. Now, tell everybody, how could they get in touch with you, Chris? Well, you could dial the phone number, 914-666-6300, or you can go online, www.hhpny.com. That's pretty incredible. And i got to tell you guys, this guy, is. what I like about him is he's honest, trustworthy, and uh, oh. you know what, he, he does an incredible job. He's got OCD like me. Yes, thank he you. leaves your place like he wasn't even there. Beautiful. Thanks Thank for you. coming, Chris. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, that brings us to our next point that we talked about, which was challenge your negative thoughts. Try to reframe negative thoughts into a more positive or neutral ones. Absolutely. You, you, must, cha you must challenge yourself. In life, if you don't challenge yourself, what do you have? You got nothing. Look, I told you a hundred times, Life is full of pain. If you can't deal with the pain of life, you're not going to deal with life. I mean, that's just the way it is. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I'm really, I'm really sorry because, and the problem is human beings don't like pain. And, which is normal. <laughs> it's okay not to like pain. Nobody likes pain. But the only way you learn is through pain. You heard me say many times on this show, nothing grows in the comfort zone. Here's the key to a happy life. You have to make yourself comfortable feeling uncomfortable. You got that? Once you make yourself comfortable feeling uncomfortable, you got it. You got it. You'll learn things, you'll go through things, and you'll say, it's okay, I can get through this. And the anxiety will be less. Look, some people have, you know, some people it's in the family. I had anxiety in my family. My mother had it. My father had it. My father was more of a quiet anxiety. My mother was more of a louder anxiety. Both great parents, but both of them had anxiety. And obviously they passed it on to me. How, I don't know. But it's just, I think it's part in the DNA. I don't know. But if you come from a family where there's anxiety, you have to recognize that. You know what I do? I do the grateful flow. Every night, I try to do it every night. If I forget at night, I do it in the day. When I wake up, as soon as my eyes open up, think of five things that you're grateful for. Five. Or you could do it at night. It's called the grateful flow. And when, and when you do that, you say things like, I'm grateful for the family I have. I'm grateful for this beautiful home I have. I'm grateful that I, that I work and I'm happy what I do. I'm grateful for my children. Just five. And each day, you think of five new things. And then the next day, five new things. Till you get to the point where you start saying things like, I'm grateful for the breakfast I'm going to have this morning. I'm grateful for my, 
my uh, bed. It's so comfortable. And what that does is it puts you in a space where you're grateful and it just juices you up and you feel better about your life. Would you imagine waking up and, and saying five negative things about yourself? How do you think that's going to feel? Like I said to you, you cannot have a negative thought and a positive thought at the same time. It's impossible. So why not have the positive thought? Just makes sense, doesn't it? Think of positive things. Now, I don't want to be those people that go, you know, always think positive. I know, I know it's hard. But sometimes you got to take it to the next step. It's like people who say, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to lose weight. Now, why is it that diets don't work? And most 90% of the people, <clears throat> excuse me, who lose weight gain it back. Or people who can't lose the weight. Why? Why is that? Because the, you're looking at it the wrong way. There's a piece of chocolate cake on the table. Somebody just brought up apple pie. You're trying to lose weight, but you see that apple pie. Now, I've done this with my friends. He says, oh, my God, you know, he had to lose weight. <clears throat> he had a stroke, this guy I know. And he was very nervous, and he said, Chaz, but when I see that pie and, and stuff, it's hard for me. I said, okay, that's hard for you, and I, and I get it. Because you're looking at it as face value. That's a great piece of apple pie, but I can't eat it. If you say that to yourself, you know what? You're going to eat it. Because you didn't raise the stakes. But now if I say to you, if you eat that apple pie and you keep doing this, things like this, that apple pie is going to go around your heart and the cholesterol and blood and it's going to clog your arteries. And you have two young girls at home, two young girls that are 12 and 13. Do you want to see them get married? Do you want to see them walking down the aisle? You already had a stroke. A minor stroke, yes. But that was God warning you, telling you, hey, buddy. Sometimes God whispers to you, hey, buddy, stop, stop. And when you don't listen to God, sometimes he comes in heavier with the next one. So if you think of it like that, if you raise the stakes on the decision you're about, that apple pie is that big of a decision. It's not, well, it's gonna, it's gonna, I'm going to gain weight, I'm going to go off my diet. No, no. The stakes are bigger. You want to see your children get married, those two young girls? You want to dance with them and sing Daddy's Little Girl? Then don't eat that apple pie. And that's what I told him. And he didn't do it. Now, I hope he stays that way. But he didn't do it. It's like a friend who I had was smoking. I mean, and I never smoke, so try, I, I don't mean to be uh, Mr. Know-it-all and, you know, Mr. Perfect. And I said to him, how could you smoke? After all the information they have today, how? How is that possible that you could smoke? everybody knows this is it. You're cutting your life expectancy like huge. And he said, I know. And my family wants me to stop. And they, I go, my man, you won't be around for your children. Every time you put that cigarette in your mouth, it's going to happen. Now, I know it's like cocaine and it must be like incredibly hard to stop. But my God, have some, have some discipline. You know when they stop? You know when they stop, guys? <clears throat> when they get a major heart attack or stroke or um, the doctor walks in and says, well, you know, we, got, we found a spot on your lung. All of a sudden, it's, oh, my God, please don't let this happen to me. Oh, God, I promise I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop. People learn when they have pain. People learn when they suffer. But you want to beat that. You want to 
get to that problem before that happens. Look, nobody gets out alive. We're all going to go, okay? And people go, well, I'm going to die anyway. Oh, I love people who smoke. That's my only vice. Really? Well, that, devi- that uh, uh, you know, vice is bigger than all of them. It sweeps everything else. Oh, it's my only vice. I don't gamble. I don't drink. I don't. Th- this is my only vice. What kind of shit? What kind of answer is that? Do you want to be around? This is it, folks. This is not a dress rehearsal. You want to lay there with tubes up up your nose and and breathing, walking around with a. a <clears throat> I saw people, a, some, a family member, walk around with an oxygen thing. You want that? You have to think about that when you have that next cigarette. Think about that. Or when you have that next big piece of uh, banana cream pie. Think about it. You have children. You want to live a good life. You want to live to the point where your your last 70, 80, 90, when you're 90 years old, you live in some kind of quality life? Why not? Go in, a, go in an old person's home. Go in a, <clears throat> one of those home, old age homes. You see no fat people, <clears throat> and you see nobody smoking. There's a reason for that. And when I say fat people, I don't mean to shame anybody, folks. I don't. I never had a weight problem, so, you know, people say to me, Chaz, you got to be a, give people a little slack. And I do. And I do. But God, you see the handwriting on the wall. I, you know the outcome. It's like going out a door and somebody's hitting you in the head with a bag of garbage every time you walk out that side door. After a while, you can't walk out that side door anymore. You got to realize. I think, was it Sigmund Freud? There was a, a psychiatrist who said, smoking is the ultimate form <clears throat> of self-hatred. Now, I don't know about green with that, but... If you know it's doing bad for you, and if you know your family's upset, I say try not to do it. You know, uh, get rid of that anxiety. What about what? Anything, anything else, John? Well, I have a question. Do you think smoking helps your friend with his depression, or makes it worse knowing that it's bad for his health? Well, that's what you know. Smoking obviously helps his anxiety because when he smokes. It calms his nerves down because he he's addicted to the nicotine. So in the short run, yes, for him to quit smoking, and if he has anxiety, that's only going to make it worse. It will. It will make it worse. That's no bullshit. But you know what? You're not the only one who's ever quit. Many people quit. And if they could do it, you could do it. Uh... You might have to take the patch or you might have to do something else. And I'm not asking you to quit cold turkey. or. But you have to see how to better your life and how to live a better family life. Because you want to be around a long time. We all want to be around a long time. Uh, you got to take care of yourself. You got to work out, eat right, eat healthy. Uh, do the grateful flow. Do you know what kills people more than all of that? You know what, John? What is it? Stress. Stress. So you're walking around so stressful because you smoke and you're 100 pounds or 60 pounds overweight. You know what you do? Pick up something that's 60 pounds or weights and walk around the house with that. That's what you're doing to your body. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. This is your body, folks. I've said it a hundred times. Do you imagine when you were 20 years old, I said, here, I'm going to buy you a brand new car. But this is the only car that you're ever going to have. Every person who's born gets one car. But you never get another car. So you better fix it up and make sure it works right. You would take care of that car like you wouldn't believe. You would change the oil every two, 3,000 miles. You would make sure it's tuned up. You would make sure it's clean. You would make sure nobody gets in it and trashes it or comes in and eats it. You would make sure of that. But that's your body. 
You only get one body, folks. One. That's it. And you're telling me you're not going to take care of it? Are you out of your mind? You get one body and you're not going to take care of it? How dare you? How dare you be that arrogant and spiteful to what God has given you? How dare you? So, you know what? That's how I think sometimes. Man, do I want that chocolate cake? Absolutely. Do I want to eat more? And I'm, I'm Italian, cannolis and all this other stuff. Yeah. But I think about my body and I think about my life and I think about being there for my children and my wife, of course. And uh, it's quality of life. This, this podcast was about quality of life. If you, wanna, if you care about the quality of your life, then you have to work on it. You have to work on it. You think it just happens? You think your life just happens good? People break their ass to get a good life. I broke my ass. I was broke a lot in my life in the beginning, but I was happy because I had a dream and I tried to do the right thing. Life is like dominoes, folks. If you hit the domino in the right direction, it goes right. If you hit the dominoes in the wrong direction, it goes wrong. Once you go the wrong, once you, once you don't lose weight, then you get sick, then you fight with your family, then you fight with your wife and kids, then you fight with people, then you feel shit about yourself. And that's like the dominoes in the wrong direction. When you work out, what happens? You work out, you're conscious about your weight, You don't eat things that are bad for you. You quit smoking. Now the dominoes go in the right direction. And that's what you want. You want your dominoes to go in the right direction. And it all starts with the first step. Napoleon Hill, great great writer, said, your next move is your biggest move. Your next move is your biggest move. And that's how it starts. Make the next move. Say to yourself, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Because trust me when I say this, you'll be gone. Or you'll live a horrible life. Or you'll be sick in the hospital. And your kids will move on. Your wife will move on. Okay? If you want to be there and enjoy the celebration of life, then check out the quality of your life. That's important. This is Chaz Palmateri. I hope you had a great... uh, I really enjoyed talking about this. There was a lot of people that talked about it. I'm going to talk about more episodes about anxiety, but this one here was terrific. Don't forget, go to chazpalmateri.net and come and see my one-man show. it's uh, It's really special. It's been a hit for 34 years all over the world. And if you never saw it, put it on your bucket list. Remember, at the Bergen Pack, I'll be there next week, uh, April 23rd. I'm going to say a few of them. I'll be at the Richfield Playhouse June 4th in uh, in Richfield, Connecticut. And Huntington, yeah, my favorite place, Huntington, New York, at the Paramount Theater. Come and be at the Foundation Room. I go down at the end of the show. We have a ball. It's a great time. God bless you all, and see you next week.